Good evening. My name is Elder Bill Luce. And I'm Deacon Ursula Luce. It is our pleasure to welcome you this evening to the 2022 Watch Night Service of United Christian Church of Detroit. Here at United Christian Church of Detroit, we believe, as the Bible tells us, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is this faith that has allowed us to serve the citizens of metropolitan Detroit for over the last 80 years. And it is this faith that will carry us into the coming year. We pray that you will enjoy our service this evening and hope that you will worship with us in 2023. We are very excited for what God has in store for us in this coming year. Thanks for taking the time to worship with us this evening. We pray that God will continue to bless you and your family in the coming year. Thank you and God bless. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, I say praise the Lord, everybody. How many know the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever? Come on, help me out today. Say, oh, 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 oh,
on and praise him if you know he's good. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I read that there are many characteristics of faith. There are three types of faith. Scriptural, traditional, and human personal experiences. Today, I will share my personal experience with faith. Did you know that there are 700, 400, 7,487 promises that God made to mankind in the Bible? Some of the promises are big and some are small, but we can believe if he said it, we can believe it. How did our faith journey begin? How did Ricardo's and my faith journey begin? I am a third generation disciple of Christ. My grandparents, Bruce and Etta Lanier, were joined the church role shortly after the charter was signed. My parents, Mac and Doretha Jenkins, were longtime faithful members of United. I have a long legacy of being raised by faithful parents and being raised by a church full of faithful members. I can remember the teachings of the Nunleys, the Curtises, the Bradleys, the Bostics, Sister Bertha Jackson, and even Brother Franklin. I can go on and on naming the faithful. The faith exhibited by my family and church family has guided me during many of Ricardo's and my tests and trials. We believe like Joe, Abraham, Noah, Moses, and countless other saints in the Bible, that if we believe and move on faith, that we too shall be rewarded and receive eternal life. We have received, we have experienced many trials. Ricardo was shot as a young man at the bank. He had a stroke. Uh, on the day he had the stroke, God revealed to me Numbers 23, 19 that says, that he was not man, that he shall not lie, nor son of man, that he should repent, that he keeps his promises. That day he revealed seven promises to me. He told me that he would be my strength, he would fight for me, hear my prayers, love me, give me peace, prosper me, but most importantly, never to leave me. I immediately found peace knowing that this situation would be taken care of and that it would be a testimony. Entering the ER, I told the chief of staff of emergency that we were true believers, that we had the faith and I believed that Ricardo would be all right. Do you know that when they were taking Ricardo to the room shortly after his being there, that the chief of staff came to me and said, you said you were a believer, and I believe that to be true. Anyone that had the amount of bleeding and damage to their brain would either be dead or require surgery. And your husband is going directly to a hospital room uh, with the care of the nurses and doctors in the uh, ER. Actually, when Rick was shot, the person shot him point blank and the bullet, he was a little thick guy. They said the fact that he had some fat on him slowed the bullet down. It bounced off his spine. So therefore he was not paralyzed. And that was God. That was God. Because he was a strapping young man, captain of the basketball team, uh, very athletically built, you know. Uh, but God prepared his body so he could take that bullet. He's good. That's good. We were believers. I believe it to be true that God was with me that day as he has always been with us. We have grown stronger in our first faith as we give glory to God. United, putting your faith in God and having the confidence that he will fulfill your promises, the key is key. Lastly, Rick has been resuscitated twice in the hospital, the time before last. In fact, God said to me, what did I tell you? What did I reveal to you? I am your strength and I believe that. 
we watch and we pray and we watch for the transformation of our lives and the life of our church. We love our church. It's a struggle to get Ricardo to United on Sunday morning, but every time he comes, he walks away with such joy in his heart because he's seen his friends and his loved ones. We love United. We pray for United. We pray that God will continue to bless United and provide his children with love, peace, happiness, prosperity, increased membership, a stronger outreach program, a program where the younger people are involved. I was a member of the Young Adult Club at United ooh, 50 years ago, and we had a big hand in uh, forming some of the rules and policies of the church that kept us involved in the church. And many of us have stayed in the church. Brother Dan, Shirley, Sister uh, Janetta Cotman, it, it was a good fellowship. Even if we let go of God's hand, he is still holding on to us. God will not abandon us. Prayers will build our faith and help us keep our eyes focused on the Lord, especially in times of crisis. Meditation is powerful. These are our testimonies. We were given tests. God is more than a conqueror and we can be of good courage. For he is because the hallelujah belongs to him. It is the fact that God does not cause all things, but he does cause all things to work together for the good. Please have faith, watch and pray, pray and watch, hold tightly to God's hand. We look forward to for the year 2023 and all the blessings that Lord has prepared for us. And we wish each and every one of you a happy new year. Lord, you reign all, all victory. 
You give me everything I need, Lord. I worship you because of who you My name is Deacon Tanisha Walls, and I'm the moderator at United Christian Church. I bring you greetings and well wishes for this New Year's Eve watch night service. It is my hope and prayer for 2023 that we as a church, a community, a nation, and a world operate with more unity. Merriam-Webster defines the word unity as a condition of harmony, accord, Another definition for unity is the quality or state of being made for unification. What does that mean or look like for the body of Christ? First, we need to identify in the church where there's a lack of unity. For some churches, it's newer members versus older members. For some churches, it's new leadership versus old leadership. And in some churches, it's our more seasoned saints versus our younger saints. But in order for us to achieve unity and operate in the spirit that Christ would have us to operate in so that we could go out and make new disciples, we have to first understand that there are some things, that, key components that need to be in place in order to get to unity. One of those components is love. We always have to operate from a spirit of love. Additionally, we have to have key communication but most importantly, we have to be willing to compromise. There's no one right way to do anything, whether it's an older perspective on how to do things or whether it's a newer perspective on how to do things. Think about it like a renovation to your home. If you wanted to renovate your kitchen, you wouldn't go in and say, well, yeah, the kitchen's nice, but let's tear the entire house down. And sometimes, when we have battles between newer members and older members, that becomes the space that we operate in. We want to continue to do what we always did and just get in line and fall in line with that. And then it becomes, well, we don't are part of that, so let's just do what we want to do. But in order for us to move forward as a church, we all have to bring the good components of what we have to the table and attempt to make a new thing so that we all can move forward and do the best of our abilities to make new disciples of men and women. So if you were going to renovate your kitchen, you wouldn't just throw out good cabinets. If you wanted to make changes to those, you might say, well, let me change the knobs on the cabinets or the pulls on the cabinets, but keep the cabinet that is intact because it's still solid and it works. You bring the new to the old and create a new thing that now serves the needs of all. That's the manner in which the church has to operate in order to achieve unity. But Christ knew that we would have difficulties moving forward, even once he had ascended to heaven and came back to walk amongst us as free men. So he left instructions for us. One of those sets of instructions can be found in Ephesians chapter four, verses 11 through 16. And it reads, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, for whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, 
according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. We cannot operate in spaces to block the blessings that God has for the church. We have to come together in order to do our best work. We can't operate from the old versus the new. We have to come together to make a new thing. Additionally, another scripture that comes to mind is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 26. And that reads, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact the body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, it is therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would we be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would we be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. That if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Amen. Simply put, we all need each other in an effort to operate as the body of Christ. No one portion is greater than the other. We have to come together in unity because perhaps God is calling the church to be the example for the world. We're not of the world. We are in the world. And we are in the world to shine the light that God has given to us to shine. We as the church need to set the example. So if we can't set the example in the church, how does that? how is that going to be beneficial to the world as a whole? I'm often reminded when thinking of unity of a song made very pop, a very popular song by Bishop Hezekiah Walker. And the song says that I need you to survive. I need you, you need me, and we're all a part of God's body. Stand with me, agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me and I need you to survive. I can't do it by myself, nor can any one church leader do it by themselves. We all need each other because God has gifted us all with so many different things that we need to use together in unity in order to move the church forward. So this is my prayer for us in 2023, that we can operate in a spirit of unity. Whatever it is that causes discord, pray about it before we lash out with one another, before we're harsh with one another. Remember that we expect God to forgive us and his mercies to us are new every single day. So we have to also extend forgiveness to the, our brothers and sisters in Christ, even when they're not really operating in the spirit of love. We still are called to operate in love. It's not going to be easy. Nothing that's worth having is ever easy. But if we operate in the spirit of love, compassion, forgiveness, we too can achieve unity. That is my hope and my prayer for us in 2023. May God continue to bless and keep you. And I look forward to seeing you all working with people in order to get the mission accomplished. Amen and amen again.
on, people of God. This is our time for praise. This is our time for worship. So come on, do me a favor and just wherever you are, just begin to lift your hands and magnify the name of the Lord. Come on, if he's been good to you, come on, let's just worship the Lord on this afternoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are perfect, tried and pure. You are healer. You are the cure. Yes. Redeemer of the lost and cold. You're the sovereign Lord of all. Your creator of earth and stone. You're the maker of flesh and bone. You're Jehovah, all powerful. And you're a freedom worth fighting for. So come what may, you're worthy of glory. Come what may, you're worthy of praise. All we are is glory's reflection. And we'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. And your kindness unmatchable. Hey, there's grace for guilt. There's grace for all. You're the light. For the path unknown and lord without you where would we go you're the way our open door to the heaven from earth below your defender when judgment comes we're protected by your blood. So come with me. Come with me. All we are will bless your name. All will bless your name. Come with me. Come with me, yeah. Come on. All we are, say, we'll bless your name. Hey, we'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. We'll bless your name. Hey. hey, come on, go with me right here. Yeah. Say hallelujah, hallelujah, what you gave us, we give it all to you. Say hallelujah, come on, say it with us, hallelujah, what you gave us. We give it all to you. Say hallelujah. Come on, say it with me. Hallelujah. What you gave us, Lord. We give it all to you. Say what you gave us. We give it all to you. Say what you gave us, we give it all to you. We give it all to you. Come on, we give it all to you. I give you all my worship, Jesus. I give you all my praise. Come on, we give it all to you. Everything, everything I have. Come on. 
we give it all to you everything that I have all that I have hallelujah hey hallelujah hallelujah what you gave us we give it all to you come on say it with us hallelujah come on I can hear you hallelujah come on say it what you gave us we give it all to you What you gave us, all of my worship, we give it to you. We cast our crowns at your feet, Jesus. We give it all to you. Yeah, we give it all to you. Say, we give it all to you. Hallelujah. We give it all to you. Everything that I have. Everything that I need, we give it all to you. Now come on and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We hope you have enjoyed what some of our leaders have shared. Elder Luce and Deacon Walls and Deacon Thomas have shared with us this night. As we prepare ourselves for 2023, there is a word from the Lord. Turn with me, if you will, in your books to in your Bibles to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. I'm going to read from you verse 11 and 13. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verse 11 and 13. You'll find these words penned there in the book of Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verse 11 and 13. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. For a few moments, I want to put a tag on this text. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Say it with me. Your best, my best is yet to come. My best is yet to come. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to break bread with you. Father God, as we come before you this evening, as we prepare ourselves for a new year, we ask you, Father God, to not only forgive us of all that's past, but help us to help us, Father God, to forgive others that are trespassed against us, that we may not shut ourselves out of your word. We ask you, Father God, to remove me out the way. Let not my voice be heard, but let your voice be heard through me. Let not me be seen, Father God, but let your spirit be seen in me. Father God, don't let me go before the cross this evening, but let the cross go before me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in that sight, O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your best is yet to come. Well, United, another year has come and gone. Now, we all know that reflection can be painful as we consider what we did and did not accomplish. The peanut cartoon illuminates this point. Charlie Brown and Lucy are on the deck of a cruise ship. And as they stand on the deck, Lucy says, life is like a cruise ship. Charlie Brown, uh, some people take their deck chairs to the front of the ship so they can see where they are going. And other people take their deck chairs to the back of the ship so they can see where they've been. Which kind of person are you? Charlie Brown question answered, I'm the kind of person who can't get my deck chair to open up. This time of the year, we, when we reflect on our accomplishments and yes, our failures as well, 
as we hope for a better year ahead, hope is our driving force, especially when we're suffering through difficult days. And let's face it, everybody in this, under the sound of my voice has had some of those difficult days. Hope suits our case. We hope to shed those bad habits that keep our head dead and our money acting funny. We hope to prove to our boss that we can show up and show out at work and show up on time and do our jobs. We hope to reveal the side of ourselves that's more heart-driven than head-driven. We hope to eat healthy, uh, be stealthy, and wealthy. But hope built on self-reliance is feeble. Again, hope built on self-reliance is feeble. There are limits to what we can accomplish on our own. So maybe this year you can try something a little bit different. Try placing our hope in Christ. United, I want to say to you, I want you to do something different this year. This year, I want you to try not to say what we can't do and put our hope in Christ whom we can do all things through. There are some surefire reasons why we should place our hope in Christ. First, Jesus said, your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. Jesus said, our, your father knows that what things you have need of before you ask him. You can look, find that in Matthew chapter six, verse eight. There's a multitude of scriptures to affirm this truth. But my favorite one is in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, if God takes care of the lilies of the field and the fowl of the air, don't you think he'll take care of you? Of course, that's paraphrase. And I invite you to read the verses for yourself in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 32. But Jesus is teaching the crowd that life is not something you live alone. God is always there. But he didn't stop there. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Matthew chapter seven, verse seven. I know you don't have unlimited resource, but our father in heaven, our father God does. God can delete your doubts and give you a confidence that cannot be shaken. God can remove your reservations and give you a peace that passes all understanding. God can exchange your poverty for wealth that can never be stolen. God can swap out your failures for a victory that can never be lost. God can help you forgive somebody that has wronged you, even though in your heart of hearts and your deep down inside, you don't want to forgive them. God can help you let go of that so you can have inner peace. Right now, there's some things that you are holding on to united that is holding you back because you won't let go. You won't forgive and you won't let God feel that hurt with love. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's not a challenge. When somebody has wronged you, you like everybody else, I want them to suffer. I want them to pay for what they did. But God is calling us out of that darkness, out of that, that vengeful spirit into his marvelous light. And we have to go into 2023 letting those things that are behind us stay behind us and we need to move forward. But you first have to put your hope in him first, Paul says, you have to come boldly unto the throne of grace. Hebrews chapter four, verse 16, you have to come boldly unto the throne of grace. It is in our boldness that we expose the death of our faith and God's ability to turn around our testimony. In other words, I know you've been through some hard times. I know 2022 has thrown you some low blows. I know some things you wish you could take back. I understand there's some things you said that you should not have said. There's some places you've gone that you should not have gone. There's some, some people that you gave a piece of your mind that you should have kept a little bit of mind you had to yourself. I know there's some things that people have done to you, have wronged you. 
But the boldness we expose, the depth of our faith in God and our ability to our ability to turn that negativity around in our testimony. But here's another reason to put your hope in God. First, Jesus said, your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. But secondly, Christ says, God promises to lead you away from temptation. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, there have no temptation taken, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful that you will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with temptation also will make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Repeat offenders need to take note. God always makes a plan to, of escape for his own. The only way a Christian can repeat the same mistake over and over again is to ignore God's escape plan in favor for Satan's snare. Again, repeat offenders. I need you to hear me now because I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about myself. The only way a Christian can repeat the same mistake over and over again is to re, is to ignore God's escape plan in favor of Satan's snare. So all the things I said I wasn't going to do again, and I did again, it's because I allowed myself to fall for Satan's snare. I allow my flesh to take over. And, and I need you to understand that all of us, some of us, not all of us, some of us have fallen over and over again saying we weren't going to do things and find ourselves doing it again. It is because we allow Satan's snare to be allow ourselves to choose Satan's snare over God's escape plan. And the reason why we do that, God's escape plan doesn't always feel good. You told that person you weren't going to yell at them no more. And you meant every word you said. But the next time you got mad, you wanted some you wanted some vindication. You wanted to feel good. So you yelled again. It's because you allowed Satan's plan to uh, uh, snare, to snap, to, uh, to cap, catch you up. God's escape plan didn't feel good because you didn't get that vindication. So you didn't go for God's escape plan because escape plan didn't feel good. I understand that. But we have to choose God's escape plan lest we make the same mistakes over and over again. Satan will snare you with lust when God offers you love. Satan will snare you with sorrow when God offers you joy. Satan will snare you with vice when God offers you virtue. Satan will snare you with disgrace when God offers you honor. Satan will snare you with defeat when God offers you the victory. When I played college football, even high school football, one of the things I came quickly to realize is that victory felt great, but the road to victory didn't feel good at all. You didn't hear me. If somebody missed the shot, victory felt great, but the road to victory did not feel good at all. Sometimes I had to hurt had to put my body on the line in order to get to victory. The victory felt good, but the road to victory didn't feel good. You're going to catch that in a minute because see somebody right now is, 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 is on the road to victory. But right now, Satan's snare feels better. So you're taking yourself off the victory lane and you're headed the wrong direction. You got to put yourself on the right direction to head towards God's victory. Even though it doesn't feel good, when you get to the finish line, you'll feel great. We all know what God despises. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to 19 says, These six things do with the Lord hate. Ye seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that are swift and running to mischief, a false witness that speak of lies. And he that so of discord among the brethren. Anything God despises cannot be good for us. If we hate, if God hates it, I need you to know it's a trap. If God abhors it, I need you to know it's a snare. If God opposes it, I need you to know that it is a noose. If God condemns it, it's a ploy. If God damns it, it's a setup for your destruction. 
if you're really going to clean, uh, going to clean up, let's get real for a moment, United. God hates a greedy spirit. God hates a carnal attitude. God hates a hardened heart. God hates a selfish disposition. God hates a proud look. God hates a bitter tongue. God hates a vulgar mind. God hates a jealous glare. God hates a foolish decision. God hates a quick temper. I know I'm not on your world, but I'm about to get on your street. God hates a worldly standard. God hates an offending remark. God hates a dirty joke. I know if I'm not on your street yet, just give me a minute, I'll get there. God hates a wicked imagination. God hates an impure motive. God hates a filthy habit. God hates a hypocritical life. God hates a neglected duty. God hates a polluted passion. God hates a shady story. God hates a broken promise. And yes, God hates an ugly gesture. I can go on, but you get the point. We can get so entrapped by Satan that we fail to see God's means of escape. But it's right there in front of us. It's called Calvary. Christ paid all of this if we keep our eyes on him. He is our escape. He will teach you to walk in the light as he is in the light and to follow his lead. He'll teach you that even though you want to give that person a little bit of the mind you got left, it's better to walk away and say nothing to him at all and talk to God because God can set you free. You see, sometimes we got to learn to take the higher road, even when it doesn't feel good. Michelle Bonner said it best when she said, when they go low, we go high. But thirdly, first, our Father knows what we want before we need it. Second, God promises to lead us from temptation. But thirdly, my brothers and sisters, I need you to understand God will never fail you. United, you have come this far by faith, and I need you to understand God will never fail you. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8, where it reads, and the Lord, he that doeth go before thee will be with thee and will not fail thee, neither forsake thee nor fear and fear not, neither be dismayed. I need you to read that over and over and over again. And you will find that it reverberates like a sound, a psych psychological reinforcement. God can't fail. He can only succeed. If you resign yourself to trusting him, to put all your hope in God, Isaiah says that the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose water fails not. God never fails. Governments fail. Marriages fail. Careers fail. But God never fails. He never fails because he is in he because in our failures, he is our strength. His strength is made perfect in weakness. God can feel with faith, will fill you with faith enough to conquer all of your circumstances. God can fill you with uh, enough faith that can destroy your doubts. God can fill you with a defeat, uh, with, with defeat that will defeat all your discouragements. God can fill you with so much faith, you'll overcome all opposition. God can fill you with so much faith that you can face all your fears. God can fill you with so much faith that you can stand in the midst of your storms and not be swayed. God can fill you with so much faith that, that you'll fight, you'll be able to fight all your battles and come out victorious on the other side. 
God can fill you with so much faith that you can resist all of your temptations. God can fill you with so much faith that you'll survive all the tests. God can fill you with so much faith that you can fulfill all your commitments, but you got to first put your hope in him. The apostle Paul was positive that God could mold a mess into a man. And God did it for him on the road to Damascus. He turned a murdering menace into a mighty missionary. That's why Paul wrote, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter one, verse six. All you have to do is hang in there. All you have to do is stay in the fight. United, don't give up right now. Stay in the fight. Stay committed to the course because the best has yet to come. The custom, there's a custom in East Africa that intrigues me. In my travels to Africa, I came across this custom and I need you to know it not only intrigued me, but it was amazing to see in practice. Visitors come and stand at a distance and they call out and say, Hodai. Hodai means, may I come? After calling, after calling out Hodai, the visitor waits for a response from the person he's visiting. And that response is, Kapriyabu, which means come closer. This little ritual is repeated several times until the visitor stands face to face with the host. United every time we call out to God, hold I, may I come. God says, Kariba, Karibu, which means come closer. Closer until you can feel the love of God. Closer. Until you can feel his protective arms around you closer. Until all of your fears and anxieties and worries disappear closer. Until you're able to do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthen you closer. So we don't do ministry the same way anymore, but we do it with the renewed spirit and the right mind that's been revealed to us by God. God can always says year after year, come closer. Come closer, my child. Come closer. Don't look at where you've been, but where I want to take you. Break into a run. My arms are open, always wide open. And my promises are always true. I know that you are in what you're in need of. And I don't put more on you than you can bear. This is the word from the Lord. United going into 2023. Let us not tarry on what did not work. Let us not tarry on past arguments and bickerness and things that set us apart, but let us tarry on God's faithfulness and his love for us as we move forward in the name of Jesus. You can remember our heart is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I need you to understand that God is not through with United yet. And with a now faith, we can move forward in the future. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time we shared together. We ask, Father God, if anybody needs to give their life to Christ, that Father God, they raise their hand. And you go ahead, Father God, and intercede on our behalf as we continue this prayer. Thank you, God, for loving us in spite of. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving us when we wouldn't forgive ourselves. Thank you for even not punishing us when we deserve to be punished. So, Father God, if anybody is under the sound of my voice wanting to have a stronger and deeper relationship with you, Father, sup with them. Sup with them.
So now as we close out 2022, we close it out by saying, a peace that God gives unto you, a peace we give unto everybody under the sound of my voice. Victory that God gives to you, we give victory to everybody under the sound of my voice. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, let the church say amen, amen, and amen. Happy New Year, everybody. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you is by prayer. Thank you.